Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers for inviting me to present uh, this paper. Uh, I guess this is the second one. I think uh, uh, there's another question of sustainability. <laughs> I guess uh, yeah, this kind of PA managers uh, conference really needed to, to kind of uh, for us to, I mean, mainstream this for all these initiatives, is it? Because we are the frontliners. I mean, you all are the frontliners to implement this uh, whatever policies and uh, recommendations that come out from this, is it? We can't just blame the policy if, if the implementers like us are not aware of it. Okay, uh, basically I'm taking this out of the, uh, uh, the, the, the ongoing process of developing the National Framework for Protected Areas and uh, Last Friday, I was at the Department of Wildlife at the, at the PA project office. Then uh, I think first thing, Ms. Justin asked me how many slides. <laughs> so I said, go 40 over. He said, better cut it down to, you know, don't, don't want to, you know. So I, I kind of took the main things, okay? Where do I go? Okay, uh, probably, uh, I don't know whether uh, many of you all are aware that uh, one of the first thing I think ministry was trying to do was to see how many PAs that we have. So we have this uh, initiative to uh, list out the PAs and uh, this has also uh, has gone through a long process. Uh, we, we, this uh, interim PA master list that was uh, prepared at the end of 2014 and uh, and uh, it has got 4 million hectares of terrestrial PAs and 0 0.6 million hectares of marine PA, but uh, of course not including Sun Tun Mustafa Marine Park that was recently gazetted. So I think congratulate Sabah for, what's that? Berapa kali ganda lah, huh? PA apa? marine telah bertambah. Huh? So uh, in terms of uh, PA coverage, uh, keluasan PA yang uh, state yang Di Semenanjung, Pahang lah. Tapi uh, dari segi keluasan negeri lah. Kalau dari segi keluasan negara dan Pahang, dia rasa ni buat 2%. Tapi the main leader is uh, Sabah, 1.5 million hectares lah. Or PA, uh, 4 points, almost 5% of the country. Or 21% of the state. And uh, Sarawak, uh, interestingly, uh, in the last uh, uh, state election, and uh, PEA was one of the, or totally protected areas, as they call it in Sabah, uh, is one of the 10 manifesto the CM uh, put forward to have 10% of the state covered under PEA. So it's, I think it's, uh, it's gaining a lot of, uh, going up in the ladder lah, of the you know, political agenda. Hopefully also in other areas. Uh, so there is this process where uh, the, the what's that? Uh, I'm developing this uh, on behalf of the ministry and the department, funded by this uh, UN PA financing project. Uh, gone through a lot of consultation, but uh, the one of the main thing that thing many stakeholders want is whether we can have this uh, interim PA master list published. So I think NRE is taking another round of consultation before it publishes. Huh? So what's the uh, issue here is that uh, our PAs, I would say that although we have a long history of uh, PAs being created, gazetted or designated, whatever terms that we would like to use, but basically I'm saying that it's more of a uh, uncoordinated. We don't have a national framework to govern this uh, uh, governance of this PA and as a result, there are various networks of PA. We have we have done very well in terms of have establishing various uh, networks of PAs. So, of course, the federal government also is coming, but mainly confined to Peninsular Malaysia, Sabah and Sarawak, uh, independently on their own, and also lately, community and NGOs have also come into the scene. So, uh, this one, I think, uh, I don't have much to touch upon because... Uh, Dr. Bala has already highlighted, but just to take note that target, uh, of what's that, uh, objective three or target six, where we have the specific 
uh, indicators for PA that is that is the 20% terrestrial and 10% uh, uh, marine, and also to develop the national protected area framework, which is I'm really going to focus on. Eh? So these are the PAs. As you can see, by 2025, we need to increase our PA to about 20%, and it means we need about 7 million, or about 7 million hectares of uh, terrestrial PA. And uh, from so we need to we need to designate. 3 million hectares of uh, additional PAs in addition to strengthening the existing PA management. Eh? So within 2016, so if you include this year, 10 years, so we need about 300 over 1,000 per year. So how are we going to get it? So we need to look at uh, uh, some kind of harmonizing it across all this network. So uh, this is the kita consultation, eh? various. Uh, uh, salah satu yang telah timbul dalam consultation process, dia buat stakeholders mengatakan jangan kita buat shift the goalpost lah. Every time new policy come, kita ada new new target kan. So kita kena menunaikan itu yang dulu ni IC target 17% by 2020 lah. So anyway, uh, we have the final, the 10 year final target that is uh, 20, uh, 20 percent. But in between, whether we can also achieve this, uh, this one, the other commitments that we have. Okay, uh, dalam proses consultation, as we are know, kita ni negara bersekutu, so kita consult dengan all this uh, state government. One of the things is that lah, kita the component PA kita kena ada di legal atau regulatory. The management, then the area, itu kena di, com, three major components on PA. Uh, so, kita recognize this, but subject to all this, uh, apa, kita have a constitution lah. Jangan kita apa, try to do something that is uh, going against the constitution. So, recognizing all this, uh, uh, the various state and federal can govern PAs. Then, uh, moving on that, I think many of the stakeholders agree kita perlu adakan satu definasi PA lah bagi Malaysia. Uh, selama ini, we are using the IUCN and the CBD, either one depend on which stakeholders they are using those the definition, but whether we, they, most of them agree that kita kena ada satu definasi untuk uh, Malaysia bagi PA. Then uh, in the last workshop, 29-30 June ni, kita telah mengambil uh, almost uh, half a day lah to brainstorm on this. So finally, we came up with this definition, a geographical area dedicated for the protection and conservation of natural and cultural resources. So many of the stakeholders, especially those in Sabah, Sarawak, dealing with the local communities and so on, uh, telah menekatkan bahawa the animal cultural must be inside, although many of the Agencies are mainly biodiversity-related agencies. Eh? Uh, then managed through legal and or. So, selama ini kita menekankan gazetmen kan. PA ini perlu digazetkan. Tapi, uh, after much deliberation, we also should look at other alternatives because even uh, CBD and uh, IUCN pun uh, look the, some kind of uh, regulatory framework, uh, so not necessarily just legal framework. Uh, the reason one of this is that as we look at all this, our PAs yang the past lah, PAs and the Rompin, ataupun even Taman Negara when it was first uh, gazetted in 1939, it was almost about uh, seven or eight years after it was first proposed, even during the British time. And uh, one of the, because the, one of the reason we would see is that there is no dedicated people at that where the somebody must take action to designate this PA. Tado Or the even till now, even in now, even I make want to make an appointment to the state government to brief on this. There is no dedicated person whom I am going to brief. You know, so this is one of the issues. Not that the state government is not interested or what. There are no dedicated unit, no dedicated people 
assigned to do this kind of task at some of these agencies and state governments. So the period between it is uh, first identified and it was gazetted as a PA is a very lengthy process. In the case of Wanda Rompin Johor, it took uh, first identified in, yes, way back in 1968 in the EPU document or 1976 in the third Malaysia plan, then 1991 gazetted. In the meantime, what happened? Nobody is managing it as a PA and the rhinos went off. <laughs> after, after it was gazetted, there's hardly any rhinos left. So the same story. This was a briefing, uh, Pahang State Government then pointed out to them, uh, like Ululapa, the department, if you look at old records, uh, spent a lot of money doing all kinds of work, enforcement, but there were 90 over sladangs there, and now it's zero. 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 <laughs> because the area is not designated, so we are not managing. So why don't we manage first and uh, look at the legal aspect later? Can we do that? In many countries are doing it. Uh, recognizing and harmonizing the diverse legislation. So, uh, as a, due to the constitution, constitutional setup of the country, uh, we have come up with a lot of legislation. In fact, uh, there are more legislation than legal officers assigned to look at this, at this legislation. So we have and more will come. Because even uh, as other states are uh, looking at this more seriously, they would come up with these uh, new laws. Uh, so, and new other non-traditional laws are also coming into the picture where uh, PAs can be designated. But the gaps are that is that there's a lot of, uh, what's that, uh, variation in terms of the provisions under this law. In some laws, there are no, I would say, penalty for illegal entry uh, within the country. So the poacher can de decide where you want to poach. Look at the fines and then decide which area he wants to go and poach. Some are low, some are high. And uh, there is some have provisions for use of poison, some doesn't have. So this one we need to we're not saying that, uh, of course, NRE as a major focal player for this. It's not saying that we must have a standard law or such, but we need to harmonize it, the provisions. No? We can have our own individual laws, states and agencies, but should, can we harmonize them you know, so that the penalties don't vary too much and, and there are provisions for you know, various offenses. No? So this is one of the things that are being uh, discussed with the you know, uh, stakeholders, especially the state and agencies. No? Then also, the used to be few, what's that, in the early part of the presentation, it was uh, management agencies. Now we have modified it to management bodies because there could be non-government agencies uh, managing uh, PAs. Huh? So we have these agencies and also local community and even local authority. They are managing pockets of uh, biodiversity hotspots like uh, you go to Putrajaya or you go to, you know, uh, maybe, you know, some other uh, local authorities they are having, you know, uh, some urban parks. and So those areas could be potential uh, PAs too, you know. Uh, interestingly, like in Slango, the Selangor Water Authority ataupun Lembaga Urusan Air Selangor, dia telah mewartakan about 10 over sites as water catchment area and uh, at a strict uh, uh, garis panduan lah. Tak boleh bina bangunan dan apa, discharge for, for, for chemicals and so on. And uh, luas pun ada enforcement officers. Uh, unlike uh, JAS, which also has similar apa, mandate, just, uh, no, we can just, uh, apa tu, DID, uh, JPS. Uh, JPS, uh, they don't have enforcement people, but Lembaga Urusan, the uh, IA Selangor, they have enforcement people. So we have local communities coming in, so they will have, so there will be many players coming in the future for PA management, of course NGOs, and also the private sector. 
uh, which we put in many of the uh, EIS that they are not supposed to develop their river banks, slopes, and uh, maybe there are even uh, high, what's that, uh, high value conservation areas huh, within the oil palm plantations. So even uh, like if you look at annual reports of the uh, United Plantation, Saim Dabi, they are also proactively managing so-called wildlife reserves and so on, which doesn't come under this. And so we could bring those, those sites into these areas. Huh? So even Sabah Sarawak. Huh? So, uh, recognizing and also harmonizing it is. Huh? But when you have such a big group of stakeholders, it's just like uh, somebody, what uh, Victor mentioned just now, we are like a mini United Nation. No? So, you know how big the United Nation is to coordinate things. We need a strong coordinating school. We don't have a strong coordinating body at the national and also at the state level to look at this. So, of course, we can say that we have a lot of plans, but uh, plans are not implemented. But basically, we don't have a strong coordinating mechanism to look into it. Sometimes we can't just rely on the National Biodiversity Council because they only meet once a year. So, in between that, what happens? There must be some kind of permanent secretariat, technical people, either seconded or something like that to look into this. So, if you don't have that, then the policy will stay as a policy and maybe looked at it in a few days in a year, that's all. And, and also, the uh, uh, through this co coordinating mechanism, we should be able to share resources or collaborate and so on. So, who is going to make the first move in terms of this kind of collaborative mechanism I would say this, this coordinating mechanism, I, I don't think it will come from the agency themselves, you know. So another thing that uh, we have so many types of PAs in terms of names and legislation as a result, combination, lah, you know. So Malaysia ni negara biodiversity, kaya dengan per ecosystem, species, genetic, Tapi kaya dengan management system pun, <laughs> dengan legislation. So all this combined uh, give you a lot of uh, headache sometimes. So person is trying to coordinate. Lah. So what I mean is that you need to have a strong coordinating mechanism. So we can classify macam ni lah, boleh lah, national parks category and no. Uh, yeah. In fact, our, our counterparts from the forest department is a major PA player. But do they have the resources to do that to... No, even to coordinate within the uh, agencies, no? Uh, 320, most of it are small VJRs and all that, but still a major player. You know, then marine parks, of course, then uh, we have fisheries department coming in. Kawasan Larangan Ikan, Memancing, then Sebagainya. So those are, then we haven't gone into the private sector, we haven't gone into the local botanical gardens, all kinds of things in the thing. Then we, kalau kita buka apa tu rancangan st struktur, eh? daerah dan sebagainya. Usually the ballpark figure jabatan perancangan bandar dan desa dia guna about 20% conservation area per district. ESA 1, ESA 2, who is, an, is the, the government pass such uh, policies, why nobody is managing? Because probably because we don't have that coordinating mechanism to do so. So, uh, during the last workshop, we, uh, there are many uh, stakeholders uh, felt strongly that we should have our national classification system, but we should be adopting the international standards law, conforming to the international standards. So, what we did was, we took from the IUCN because it's used worldwide, and also we need to report to CBD and also IUC and so on. So we stuck to this uh, six classification. Only thing is what now is that the class six of the uh, classification, we divided it so that the 6B, 6C and 6D, we can have provision for those areas that has not been gazetted. Including, uh, I went to one briefing, uh, Dr. Collins was mentioning that uh, 
only 15% of the orang asli reserves have been gazetted. You know, I'll come to that when he asks why this gazettement is taking such a long time. Huh? Of course, we can pro probably we can blame the authorities for being uh, what indifferent to it, but also the other reasons. No, so those areas that are not gazetted, but somehow or other is been approved at, at some regulatory mechanism uh, should be come into should be managed as PAs. So that was an uh, consultation with the state overwhelmingly many of them they were so happy because they could not say they don't want to get that they can take their time to get the resources to get that those areas. So what are the ways kita kena, kita kena ada diverse uh, instrument lah to designate PAs. So other than the legislation, state and federal legislation, kita ada the federal cabinet. Kita have the state ESCO, decision-making body. In addition, we have formed so many councils. Yes, biodiversity council, water council, Perthu, land council, lah, Jabatan Prancang, Bandar dan Desa and so on. So, and also the species plan. Dalam species plan itu, so many areas been identified. So, could these areas be picked up and then managed as PAs? And, uh, and also, under the BioD policy, the target, there are also other targets. By 2021, we have to come up with this. This is uh, stated, mandated, no? That we have to come up with a policy to empower indigenous community and local communities to be custodians of biodiversity. Resources. This probably this very well includes uh, management of PAs. So uh, whether we like it or not, we have we would be coming to that. No. So why don't we start it now itself in terms of managing PAs with the local community? Okay, we can have so many PAs, but there must be some kind of uh, levels of importance for PAs. Uh, the idea is that. If the, uh, you want to allocate resources, you can't be just allocating resources to all the 400 or 1,000 PAs. No? There must be some level of importance or priority. So as we see it, that some of our PAs have got international significance. World Heritage Site, Ramsar Site. Doesn't matter whether it's managed by federal or state. They are of some glo global significance. So those, those areas should be of national importance. Then a bulk of it, are important to the state level. Then, as uh, Dr. Collins mentioned, uh, mentioned, indigenous community have their sites, which are also important to them, sacred areas, roaming areas, and so on. Could we consider them as uh, important for the local community and uh, recognize them as some form of PA? And also local authorities, no? which are also keeping green areas. Then the corporate bodies, we I'm sure about if you take a Saim Dabi, they might have about 10% of the area not developed and they're just left idle or no. So that should come under the PAs, especially those uh, uh, river reserves and uh, what uh, slopes. So the one is the governance, the other one is the management. Sometimes we have to differentiate. Okay, most areas are owned by the federal or the state. Or the private or the private sector, but that doesn't hinder from these uh, these uh, agencies from entering into some kind of management. So if you look at uh, many of the stakeholders, instead we can what's that? Let the local community manage probably not the whole area, parts of the area, no part of Tamanagara, where the rivers, uh, Kula. Last time I think the. the Collins pointed out, we did go into that kind of uh, thing, but there was no mandate. So where the mandate is going to come from, probably from this policy and this uh, you know, framework to enable the, uh, the authorities to go into some kind of uh, agreement. And also, I think, on the other side also, the, 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 what's that, the civil society also has to take on in the policy and uh, go into some kind of collaborative management with the agencies. So uh, corporate they might not want, most corporate, they might not want to manage their areas on their own. Probably they, they don't have that kind of uh, resources with them, but they can uh, let, uh, what's that? Uh, 
other parties to manage their areas. No? Okay, boundary has been a, actually one of my favorite topic too. It's mainly because why? The gazette man is just a piece of paper you see. When you see a gazette of a PA like Tun Mustafa, uh, Marine Park, it's just, I think it's not, it's just one piece of page. But a lot of work has gone into inventory and the scientific work. And on the authority side, they are more concerned about the legal boundaries and issues and so on. So if it's a land area, they need to survey the on-ground survey. And the problem with the protected areas here is that you need to get higher a qualified, uh, what's that, a surveyor. And they have a rate. And uh, when we are presented this to Sabah, and they said it costs millions and millions to survey these boundaries. You know, who is going to pay? So, and uh, if you look at other professions, uh, uh, you take the medical profession per se, you have a doctor, you have a nurse. You know, there's somebody below doing some medical services. You know, even legal, even most departments have a, what's that, a, a, the PO, prosecuting officers who are not lawyers. We go and prosecute case. I prosecuted case. I'm not a lawyer. So, but you are given the uh, mandate. But for surveying, the rangers are not given the mandate. Why? Is it some kind of a monopoly? Rangers who are managing the PA should be able to demarcate a boundary and those boundaries they demarcate should be valid. But probably maybe a 10 year period after which the qualified surveyor should survey the boundary. So this is something that many PA agencies would like to see. So now they wouldn't like to, I mean, go in extensive boundary demarcation because it goes to court, it's not, it wouldn't stand. So maybe through this framework, we should explore this, no? Uh, we are not going to take the rights out, out of the surveyors, you know? No, no, going to finish. Then community conservation areas, I think already mentioned, collaborative and so on that we need to do. So another thing, the harmonizing, yes, we have all this diversity. What is going to unite these PAs? So many of them, why don't we give a brand? My PA, my power, what? Somebody say my ma, my pa, my protector. Of course, this was uh, so many different names came about, but uh, this was something that if you are part of the PA system, you will be part of this my pa. Maybe you can have a logo, la, you know. So, uh, and I think that 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 PA framework that NRE wants to develop under the National Biodiversity Policy is something that is kind of harmonizing, coordinating, empowering kind of thing. And it's not going to take the jurisdiction out of the existing state governments and agencies there are. It's made to strengthen the management of PAs. Thank you very much.